Today we have a great day, as our um, guest is Dorothea Oram. Dorothea. Hello, everyone. Ooh, sliding <laughs> chairs. <laughs> Hi, Dorothea. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you, Ella, so much for having me on your show today. It is my pleasure. Why don't we start with just give you giving us a brief background of yourself. That sounds great. I was born in Baltimore, Maryland in 1914. I got my first nursing degree at the Providence Hospital in Washington, D.C. in the 1930s. And then later I got my BSN and my MSN from the Catholic University of America. Wow, you've been in the field for quite some time. What do you think nursing is really about? I believe that nursing is an art, a helping service, and a technology all at the same time. I see. What positions have you held? Well, Alice, it's quite a list, I must tell you. I've worked in pediatrics, emergency rooms, operating rooms, adult medical and surgical units. I've also been an administrator, a professor, a consultant, and a director. You see, when you get to be my age, you've lived a lot of life and you can hold a lot of positions. I see. Wow, you sure got around. What was your favorite part? Well, I just love helping people. That's why I really got started in the nursing profession in the first place. I just love being able to make them feel better. Some other people will consider my greatest accomplishment to be my theories, though. I started it early on in my career and kind of developed it as I went through my practice, and then didn't really introduce it until 1985, so a little bit later on in my career. But it's called the self-care framework, and I have three different theories that kind of go along with that. I think I've heard of those before. Do you care to share about it? I would love to. The goal of nursing is to render the patient or the members of the patient's family capable of meeting the patient's needs and self-care efficiently. That is how I kind of came about with my theory of self-care. And the first one, as the title is kind of giving it away, is called the theory of self-care. These are the activities that the patient can perform on their own behalf to maintain their activities of daily living. The second part of the theory is called the theory of self-care deficit. And this is kind of where the nursing profession comes into play. A nurse is in need when the patient is actually incapable of caring for themselves in an efficient manner. And I think, depending on the situation, because, you know, we see all kinds of things in the nursing profession, that there are five different methods of helping. I think that we can, as nurses, act for and care for the others, guide them, support them in any way possible, provide for an environment of personal development, and also teach them if they're having trouble understanding a way to take care of themselves. Then finally, the third theory is the theory of the nursing system, and this actually deals with the relationship between the nurse and the patient. Wow, that is great. So it seems like the main idea is to let the patient do what they can by themselves, and then as the nurse, you're there to help them do what they can. Exactly. That's the real simple version of my theories. Well, Dorothea, I have a game plan for us. How do you feel about that? I love games. What are we going to play? Well, it's called Epic or Fail, and I have a clip from my friend Ellen playing it on her show to explain how to play. Let's take a look. Uh, in a game that I like to play, it's one of my favorite games, it's Epic or Fail, and you're going to need your paddle check under your seats, unless you brought your own, I don't know your lives. <laughs> know nothing about you, do you have your own paddle? All right, I'm going to show you a video, and uh, we're all going to see it for the first time together, I haven't seen it as either, and uh, we're going to guess if it's Epic or Fail, it's a whole lot of fun. Okay, <laughs> let's see the first one. start off positive. Oh, it's half and half out there. Wow. I don't know if they meant for that to happen. All right, let's see the next one. Oh, already. No, I just say that. A few people optimistic out there. Most of us think it's going to fail. Let's see. No. Definitely did not think he was going to make it that far. Does everyone think they get the idea? I think it's easy enough, and if I can do it, anyone can do it. After all, as the saying goes, laughter is one of the best medicines. All right, let's get started. Here's the first clip. Good afternoon, Dory. How are you? All right. Have your lunch 
for you. Thank you. All right. How are you? Any pain or anything? I'm okay. All right. Well, if you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. I don't know how this one's going to go. Uh, I'm just going to pick fail because how is she going to eat if she's texting? I'm actually going to have to disagree with you. Let's see why. That actually was epic. The nurse realized that the patient can text and therefore should be able to feed herself. Let's try the next one. Okay, Allison, it looks like you are all ready to be discharged today. Now, with your hip replacement, you are going to have a little bit of trouble. So I see your daughter's here with you today. Maybe she can help you a little bit. You're going to really have trouble ambulating around for a couple of days. You may need to use a walker or a cane a little. Um, also, maybe getting in the shower is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Are you catching this, Kaylee? Maybe you're going to need to help your mom out a little bit. Uh, no, I didn't get any of that. Okay, so your mom just had a hip replacement, and that can actually be a very invasive surgery if it's not helped properly. So you're going to want to help her into the shower in the morning or help her walk around a little bit. Yeah, I'm already kind of busy in the morning, so... Um, oh, okay. All right. I can maybe do it when I get back from my friend's house and stuff, if I have time. You know what? I'm actually going to look into um, some assisted living places for you. Maybe they'll be able to come in and, and take care of you if your daughter's so busy. I'm actually going to have to go with Epic again. I guess I'll go with you on this one. Hi, Geisinger Assisted Living. Yes, this is Nurse Rachel Grodner down at Geisinger Clinic. I have a patient that I think is actually going to need some uh, assisted care living help. She just had her hip replacement and our family doesn't really seem too interested in helping her out. Yes, that was epic. The nurse used her intuition to know that the daughter would not be able to provide the care that the mother needed. The nurse knew that her patient would need a better environment, so she looked into assisted living places. Are you ready for the next one? I'm ready. Hey Ashley, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Um, I have your anti-embolism stockings here, so I'm just going to give them to you. Um, I just want you to put them on. Okay. All right. If you have anything, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. Just putting on socks? I can do that one-handed. I'm definitely going epic. We'll see. really hard to put on, especially with one hand. The nurse should have actually stayed to help her put on the stockings. What's the next one? Hi, Kaylee. I, I really don't feel good. I, what's wrong with me? Oh, you have cancer, honey. What? The doctor is going to tell you, but I just figured tell you now, you know, just don't get your hopes up for anything. But did you see the new episode? Oh, that's so sad. I'm definitely going with fail. I agree. <laughs> really is a fail. We need to be there to comfort the patients when they have no one else for them, especially. That's considered a self care deficit. Maybe the next clip will be better. Hope Hey, Jerry, how are you? The name's Gerald. All right, hey, Gerald, how are you? Hi, baby cakes, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm feeling fine. This bed's really fun. You see, it goes up and down. Yes, we I didn't have We didn't have nothing like this when I was little. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't got nothing like this at home, neither. All right, I want to talk about taking your blood sugar. What's that? Yeah. To manage your diabetes. Oh, why? So you don't, I don't want you like passing out, going into a coma or anything. Okay then. Okay. I, I guess. All right. Is, so, it, is it going to hurt? I, I have pretty high, I have pretty high pain count. I think you can handle it. I that. was in the wars. Yeah. In the trenches. All right. I think I can, I think I can do this. So what you're going to do, lean your finger. Is it a good steak? It's a good steak. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. You're going to clean your finger with an alcohol swab. Swab. One of your fingers. Which one? Um, say middle finger. Okay. okay. Is that this one? That's this one. Okay. All right, you're going to clean, like, 
side of it right here. Okay. And then you're going to take the needle and you're going to click it down. That's going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. You're tough. Oh, all right. I forgot. <laughs> and then you're going to clear the first drop off. Okay. I would definitely need teaching, so I'm going with Epic. I would definitely agree with you. Okay, baby cakes, I think I got this. All right. I think, I think you did a good job. You want to hear some stories from back in the war time? Sure. All right, so one day we... Is epic. It's great to see that the nurse is actually taking time to teach her patient. Mm -hmm. On to the next one. We're in the... This is Alistair, your husband's medications. And I just want to explain to you, like, if he has any pain or anything, how you can give it to him and make sure he takes his medicine on time. Okay. Okay. I'm definitely going with Epic on this one. I'm going to copy you. Okay, thank you. I really understand this now, and I really think I'll be able to help my husband out when he's okay. home. Thank if you, you have any questions, just call and we'll help you. Okay. This was another Epic because we really need to get the family involved in helping their loved ones. Well, that was fun. I agree. That was a lot of fun. Thank you, Alice, for bringing up that game. And again, it wasn't intended to poke fun, but just to help demonstrate Dorothea's theory. Dorothea, is there anything else you would like to bring, to add before we bring out our next guest? Actually, yes, there's something. The clip showed the difference between self-care when you don't really need help and self-care deficiency when you do need help from the nurse. But what the videos didn't really show was the nursing system. Just real quick, there is the nursing system where people are dependent on others for their well-being. Some examples are newborn babies and patients just out of surgery. Another one is the system in which the nurse and the patient both play a part in the care. The nurse can assist the client to walk or the nurse can bring in the meal tray for them if they need it. And then, then the patient can feed themselves. So you see how there's kind of a give and take. The nurse is doing something that the patient can't do, but then the patient is helping it as well. And the last one is the supportive educator system. And this is when the person can perform the tasks themselves, but really need to be ha taught how to do it first. For example, teaching a mother how to breastfeed, breastfeed her brand new baby, or showing a diabetic how to take their blood sugar effectively. Thank you for explaining that for us. I didn't realize how complex that is. Well, I believe it's important for nurses, even student nurses, to know the role that they should or will be playing out as they go through their career. I agree. How about we bring out our next guest? Her name is Greta Banks, and she was a patient of Dorothea's. Greta, come on out. I'm actually going to go get her. Okay. There we go, Greta. Say hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. So this is Greta. She was one of my patients, weren't you, Greta? Yes, yes, I was. And can you tell us a little bit about what happened to you? Oh, I don't feel so good. So I had a stroke, and my nurse, very nice girl, she took care of me. Oh, thank you, Greta. Yes. So actually, I'm going to tell you a little bit about her nursing diagnosis, and that is just kind of what we call um, her problem and what it's related to. So the technical nursing diagnosis for Greta was risk for self-care deficit related to her stroke, as evidenced by her inability to effectively move her right side. Now, Greta, before your stroke, which hand were you more dominant with? This one. The right one? Oh, yes, the, 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 this one. Uh, the one that yeah, I before the stroke. <laughs> now, after the stroke, which one are you using? I use my left now. Right, and can you tell us a little bit about how difficult that was or if it was easy to make that switch? It was not easy. I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't make the pasta anymore. It's very very tough. You just only have the one hand. I can imagine that it's very difficult for you. So Alice, what we had to do was kind of teach Greta how to do things in a whole different light. If you go throughout your whole life, and Greta's 60. I know she doesn't look it. She looks much younger. But when you go through your whole life predominantly using your right hand, having to switch to your left hand can be an actual challenge. And that's kind of where my self-care theory comes in a little bit. I had to teach her how to use her left hand so that she didn't become a self-care deficit, but she wasn't quite ready to be completely self-care. Yeah, I can see how that would help, because now she can basically live 
by herself for the most part, with just a little bit of help. Correct. She just has someone to kind of help move her around. She has a very dear husband that's very caring and takes good care of her, don't you, Greta? Yes, my children become a family. So it sounds like your, what you call them, ADLs or something, activity of daily living? Yes. You can manage those by yourself. Did you have any goals set for? Yeah, we did actually. When Greta first had her stroke, she was kind of immobilized in the bed. She couldn't really do much at all. So our goal, our short-term goal, was just to kind of get her out of bed to be able to get her ambulating just a little bit. She can walk a little. Um, it is a challenge for Greta, right, Greta? You mostly stay in your wheelchair to move around. Yeah. But she is doing much better. She's working with physical therapy to kind of progress her walking. And for our long-term goal for her was just so that she could get some of those ADL self-cares back into her life so she didn't feel like she was always relying on somebody else. And she actually did very well. You look great. She's a very nice nurse. Thank it's you, one. Greta. Very nice. Well, thank you both for coming to my show today. And for everyone watching, tune in next week. And the guest will be one of the nation's best educators, Professor Patricia Maloney.